Since we'll be dealing with data sets, I want to make sure that we review some really basic array and object concepts in JavaScript. First, let's create a data set. Within index.html, I'll start at line 12 and create a new line, and then I'll type var data equals, and then opening and closing brackets. One thing to note is in Sublime Text 2, when I type a bracket or parentheses or curly brackets, it automatically creates the closing bracket. It also does this with quotes. Your text editor might not do that, so you want to be sure that you do create the opening and closing brackets. Within these square brackets, I'll create some numeric data. Each piece of data is located at an index. So what I'll do is I'll type console.log and then open and close parentheses because this is a function and pass as the argument an index. Grab the first piece of data, the number 132. That is the index 0 because in JavaScript we start counting from 0, not from 1. So what would be the 10th index is really 9. So let's type console.log and in parentheses data, square brackets, 0. Save it and head to our browser. I've already loaded the index.html file for this, and we'll make sure that the developer console is open, so Option Command I or Control Shift I on Windows. Now refresh, and with the console tab open, you can see the number 132. And if you look here towards the right, it shows you what line that's being logged out, which is 14. I'll head back to Sublime Text, and indeed on line 14, there's console.log. This is a very simple array. It just has numeric data at each index, and we access with the brackets, and we get it. Now, let's take a look at objects. So, new line, var donut equals, and we'll open and close some curly brackets. And in JavaScript, that's how you create an object with curly brackets. Objects are very closely related to arrays. Really, they're sort of like arrays that have associative indexes. So instead of using a number to get the item, you would use a key and a key would be a string. So let's create two properties for this object. One will be the property called key. We'll type colon and provide a value for this property. Here it'll be a string called glazed. Now outside of the string, type a comma and introduce another property. This property will be called value. Type a colon and the value for the value property, don't get confused, is 132. Now on our new line, we'll type console.log donut.key and comma donut.value. With the console.log function, you can use commas between those items you wish to display on the console. Save it, head to our web browser and refresh, so command R or control R, and you see now we have our initial logged item, 132, and now our new logged item, which is glazed, space 132. And that's what the comma does, it introduces a space. Let's go back to the code, and most often in this course, we're going to be dealing with arrays of objects. So let me create one now. var donuts equals, and we'll open and close some brackets. I'll put a semicolon after the bracket, and then put my cursor within the brackets, and create a new line. Another new line, and indent, and now I'll create some objects to store within this array. The first object will be the one that we created at line 16, so I'll highlight and copy it but not include the semicolon. If you include the semicolon, you'll break it. Paste it, and then a comma. So that's the first item, the object that has the key glazed and the value 132. Let's paste this three more times, and I'll change the key for each one. So this will be jelly, and the third one will be holes, as in donut holes, and the final one is sprinkles, as in a sprinkled donut. Just for aesthetics, I will tab these over so they're in line nice and neatly. Now I'll change the value. So for the second one, 71, and the third one, 337, and the fourth one, 93. Now you might notice that these values correspond to the values within the simple data array that we created earlier. That's by design. Okay, now beneath this newly created array, we will want to log out or print to the console one of the items. So console.log donuts. And because this is an array, we need to access it via a numeric index. So let's say we wanted the second item, the jelly donut with the value of 71. Well, that's the second item. It's a one because we start from zero. And then dot, the property name. So if we want the key, it is dot key, comma donuts, bracket one, dot value, and that will give us 71. 
save it. Let's put a semicolon here at the end of our statement. It's a good idea to do that in JavaScript. We need to separate our indexes with commas because in an array, as you can tell at line 13, each index is separated by a comma. Save it, head back to the page and refresh, and there we go. So the third line is jelly 71, and it's coming from line 25. If we head to Sublime Text 2, there's line 25. Now, when we're dealing with arrays, we often want to iterate or loop through the array. And the way that we do that is like so. So on new line, we'll type four with parentheses and then opening and closing curly brackets. We'll split the brackets and then put our cursor within the parentheses. And the parentheses is where you put the arguments for the loop. First, we'll type var i equals zero. So we're creating a variable called i and setting it to zero, comma, len equals donuts dot length. We're creating a variable called len, and we're setting it equal to the total number of indexes that appear in the donuts array. We get that number through the length property, so donuts dot length. If we wanted the total number of indexes for the data array at line 13, it would be data dot length. Now we'll type a semicolon, and the next statement will be i is less than len, semicolon i plus plus. So what this means is set up some variables. One is i is zero, len is the total number of indexes. As long as i is less than the total of indexes, increase the value for i, and we'll access i now within the curly brackets. Console.log and open and close parentheses, and we will type donuts bracket i dot key comma donuts bracket i dot value. And let's comment out line 14 so we don't see that console log or line 17. Line 25, let's comment that out. Head to the browser and refresh. So they're displayed in the order in which they appear within the array and we would have to sort the array if we wanted them in a different order. We won't cover that right now. Now there's another way to iterate or loop through an array. We'll head to the code and underneath the for loop, we'll type donuts dot for each, and each has a capital E, and we'll open and close parentheses. Now arrays in JavaScript have a method called for each, and what that does is that lets you pass a function into the method, and that function is called for each item in the array. So within the parentheses, we'll create a function in place. This is called an anonymous function. Function, open and close parentheses, open and close curly brackets, create a new line. The argument for this function will be entry. That stands for the current item that you're looping through. Now we'll take line 28 and copy it, inclusive of the semicolon, and paste it within this anonymous function. If we run it, save and refresh, we get an error, cannot read property key of undefined. Well, what that means is when we head back to the code, you see i is contained here within this for loop. So what we do is we'll substitute donuts bracket i for entry. Now we save it and refresh, and we can see the for loop, which is glaze through sprinkles, and then the for each glaze through sprinkles. Now we'll go back and forth between using a for loop and the for each method of arrays. I personally like the latter because it looks easier and makes more sense, but actually the former, the for loop, is actually faster. But for what we'll be doing in this course, that really doesn't matter. So with that, we have the basics of arrays and objects that'll get us started and going with this course. And I'll introduce more concepts as we go along.